Oh, doo doo. Well, look at this. Good afternoon, I should say, and welcome to my live stream. We are we are way out east at the ocean. Fifteen mile an hour winds coming from the south southwest, making giant waves behind me. And uh, good afternoon, man. Thanks for joining me. I greatly appreciate it. Look at Jamie Lynn going. Yo, good evening, everyone. A live stream for the drive home. I love it. Hell yeah. Hell to the yeah. Couldn't uh, live stream this morning. You know, I uh, got a little food poisoning at uh, dinner last night. So uh, was feeling like crap. Had to cancel. I'm sorry. Then I'm sitting here feeling guilty. So I'm like, you know what? Why don't you turn the live stream on before Bly uh, Blyden? Before Blyden? <laughs> before Biden blows up his entire career tonight when he does that press conference at what? 630? In a little over an hour. Uh, Biden's going to go in front of the press and it's going to be a disaster and we will have a new candidate, I say within days, to take on Mr. Trump. That's what that's my uh, prediction. Ted Palawada, what's up, buddy? Got Scott Watson. Good afternoon. Opie and all, good afternoon. What's going on, Tim Kaine? You were hungover. It's okay. Now, I would tell you if I was hungover. Uh, what's going on, Richard? How are you, uh, Jared? What's up? No, I wasn't hungover. Matter of fact, I just uh, finished a um, a five mile run down the beach to sweat it out. You got to sweat it out. Trump twenty twenty four. Save America! Oh my God, it, is that what's going on? The stakes are high. Save democracy. Save America. Vote Trump. I don't know. I don't know what to believe. What's up, Wayne Buakits? How are you? Oh, by the way, you know when you were growing up. Uh, you would go to like uh, your relative's house or houses and they would have plastic on the uh, the couches and all the furniture. Squirter. <laughs> squirter. That's the reason. Why didn't we figure that out when we were growing up? Grandma was a squirter. Uh, Wayne Boo Atkins, OPN Boo 2024. Beer time. No beer time, man. No, a little water. Little uh, agua frio. Um... I just ran the beach and I'm like, uh, I'm, I'm hoarse. I'm sweaty. But feeling good. Although I got to say the, uh, the turns, the turns have, um, have arrived. The turns have returned. The turns are evil. The turns need rocks thrown at them. The turns suck. Looks beautiful out today. It is Jared. <clears throat> Excuse me. Man, when you do a lot of running, you get a lot of, you know, lung butter that wants to come out. <clears throat> Should I swallow it? I'm going to swallow it. Okay, I swallowed it. But, yeah, the turns have uh, returned. There's a stretch of houses. I ran that away. About, honestly, it was about uh, two miles that way and then about two miles back. And, you know, it was a light jog, power walking, couple sprints, just trying to, you know, uh, move the body. <clears throat> Excuse me. But you get to a part of the beach. I don't know, about a mile, mile and a half down that way. There are 10 houses. 10 beautiful oceanfront houses that cannot use their beach house because the turns have returned. They nested somewhere and they're dive bombing everybody when you go by those 10 houses that way. So the beach, people are starting to leave the beach now. But the beach was relatively um, crowded for out here. And uh, in this stretch, the 10 houses, there wasn't a soul on the beach. And I, I didn't know why until these turns were like, Yow! and they scare the crap out of you. They're really aggressive. They chirp and they dive bomb you and they try to hit you on the damn head with their beaks because they want you away from their nests. I feel sorry for those people. I, I'm not joking. There's 10 houses down there that they literally, they literally can't, can't, uh, Sit on the sand. JD Straight Shot. Opie makes more money doing this than Anthony made throughout Compound Media. 10 years run. He had to pay all those loser shows every cent they earned. Oh my God, I just read that cold and I didn't even make money off that. I don't know, man. I just knew like when I had the opportunity to like uh, join a podcast network, uh, create a podcast network, all I knew it was after all those years of doing radio. Uh, mostly, mostly for the Opie and Anthony show. I was like, I no, no, I don't want to be the boss. No, no, I don't want to be the boss. No, I don't want to deal with that. No, I don't want to deal with the negative energy. I don't want to deal with the toxicity. No, no, no. I need a vacation day. No, no, no. I need a raise. 
because I'm having a kid. I didn't want to deal with any of that. This guy's punching this guy. Oh, now what do I do? Who do I fire? Who drinks with me? Then I'll, I'll decide who do I fire. I didn't want. I didn't want to deal with any of that. So I just, uh, I just went for the Passeru, the Pasadena, and decided to do the whole damn thing myself as a one man wrecking crew. And uh, you know, I don't regret it. You know, I'm not making money though, JD Straight Shot. No, I'm not making money now. No, my, my business manager called me. He goes, oh, by the way, this is how casual he is. Oh, by the way, your podcast insurance is due. You know, good news. It's only $12,000 this year. <laughs> Jesus. What the hell, man? Uh, Teddy Mac, the only thing Biden will be blowing tonight is his diaper. You think he, you think he lays a crap in his diaper during the press conference when he has to prove to the entire world, not just America? That he's up for the job of the presidency? No what the one thing these stupid talking heads on uh, TV aren't talking about? They're not sure if Biden is capable of continuing uh, to be president now. And they're ignoring the fact that in a year from now, if he's the president still, or two years from now, that decline is going to be brutal. He ain't going to get better. He's not all of a sudden going to get healthy and be the old Joe Biden with the wear, the, the, the weird, excuse me, crip uh, keeper hair from the old days. Oh, make sure your heart is healthy. Get a EKG and echocardiogram. Thank you, Al. I appreciate that, Al. Uh, Phil Connolly, any fly fishing plan? No, I'm not fly fishing. No, no. Uh, bring a tennis racket, book of toe. Man, you know, I like... Uh, I like creatures. Um, I'm the type of guy, I've talked about this, when there's a spider in the house and people that live in the house with me are freaking out over a spider. I'm the guy that gets right in there and I pick up the spider with a little tissue, very lightly, light grip, pick them up, and I place them outside. But when it comes to these turns, I want to clock them in the head with anything I could find. So I'm going to walk the beach with that tennis racket and just swing like a lunatic, like I'm at Wimbledon. We had turns uh, one year out here. Every year you hold your breath. You hold your breath for a couple things when you have an ocean house. Uh, you hold your breath because they're going to put up the giant fencing for the piping plovers. And that can knock you out where you can't even walk to the beach from your house. You got to like do a walk around. And some of these walk arounds are dramatic. Like you got to walk two football fields that way to finally cut in around the fencing. So we hold our breath for that. And then the second thing, which is, which is happening right now, you hold your breath that these stupid turns don't lay eggs anywhere near your house. And it happened one year, right? Wait, I got to go right there. Wait, let's do it this way. I, I can use my other hand right there. Right in the, that green area, some terns did some nesting and they had eggs. So we had a summer where from where I'm sitting to the ocean to go hang out and fish and play the Frisbee and play with the bag and crank the tunes and drink the beers, throw the football. Um, we had to run from this deck like lunatics, waving our hands like this. Like we were out of our effing minds to keep the turns away from us. Because as soon as they saw us, they started dive bombing. And then it got to a point, uh, and the kids were a lot smaller than They were only, I want to say six and maybe eight. Uh, maybe even younger than that. My, my wife taught them to go like this when they were going to the beach. And to bring a little uh, umbrella. In case they dive bombed, they would hit this stupid umbrella. Uh, but the turns have returned, and there's 10 houses that way where people can't even use their oceanfront property. They cannot settle in the sand on the beach. They can't do it because the turns have completely taken over that area. I got to get a video, because it, but it scares the shit out of me because they come from all angles, and they, they do not play. They're incredibly aggressive. You need to get back with Ant. Won't you swallow your pride and take a job from him at Compound Media? What the hell are you talking about, the Devil's Eleven? Compound Media is no more, and me and Anthony have grown uh, in very, very different directions. What are you talking about, swallow your pride? Shut up, you idiot. Okay, Jared, Opie cashed out and is living his best life. Well, I don't know about that. Don't, 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 don't put that out there, Jared. I need a few bucks still. I'm not going to lie to you. I need a few bucks. 
Uh, I got to pay for my uh, my podcast insurance. Uh, so there you go. Isn't that what pellet guns are made for? Dude, yeah, but out here, people don't play, man. You can't be known as the guy that is taking a pellet gun to the turns or the tennis racket to the turns or throwing rocks at the turns. I ever tell you my greatest turn story? Oh, yeah, I got a turn story. Of course I do. Oh, wait, but we got to go to Fish Guy Photos because we have breaking news. Hi, Chris. <laughs> How's it going? Dude, right on cue. The turns are back. I'm out of my mind. You're you're a marine biologist. Yeah, I, I, was li- I was listening to you crying about your first world problems. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you something, Chris. I got to ask your permission. Can I knock these turns out of the sky with rocks? I just absolutely need to not. <laughs> what kind of fine would that be? Not only is that a local offense, that's a federal offense too. That's uh, that could be jail time for you. Really? Yeah. They're why they're they're annoying as all hell. There's ten houses down the beach where they can't go on the on on the beach. <laughs> you do realize that that they were there first, right? <laughs> Uh, yeah, for the most part, I agree with stuff like that, but you know, they're just annoying. They're so and again, annoying. like I said, like, birds at the ocean. I, I, I got no sympathy for you, man. <laughs> no, every other bird is cool. It's cool. But the, why the turn so aggressive and they're little they got- white birds. They're what about, uh, maybe 10 inches across. Yeah, they're not they're not very big. And the ones you have there are probably least terns, which are in, uh threatened species in New York. So Oh, another they're... threatened species, really? Yep. But you know, like you said, you know, why are they so aggressive? What what would you do if somebody came charging at your kids in the city? Dude, I don't even think I was close to any nests. I was I was down near the water line. I had to tuck into the water line to get past them, and they were still dive bombing me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really not sorry for it. <laughs> They're just an aggressive bird, though, right? Well, I mean, all birds. I mean, when, again, when they've got a nest to defend, yeah. they, uh, you know, they, they put a lot of energy into uh, putting on their, passing on their genes. And, uh, you know, not only are they dealing with people, you know, they deal with other birds. So, <clears throat> you know, down at the beach, you got merlins, which are a type of falcon. You got peregrine falcons. You know, then you got, you know, just you got raccoons and fox. Um all the gulls will eat their young. So, I mean, they're, they're constantly fighting just to keep their offspring alive. You know, they got a short period too, before they can fly. So, you know, they do, they put a lot of energy into uh, trying to raise those chicks. So they, they do what they can to uh, defend them. All right. Well, but let's say a turn pecks me on the head and it draws a little blood. Then I can throw rocks at him, right? <laughs> no. I, come, at that point, it's got to be fair game. No, no, nah. no. Nah. He goes, no, nah. <laughs> he goes, no. Nah. Nah, I li- I just like putting you on the spot. I I understand. No, it's, I, you know I I was I I saw this. The, the went live and I hopped on. I to hear you cr- you crying about birds. So I was like, uh, <laughs> and I was like, let me hop on here and give him a hard time. <laughs> well, before we move on for the real reason I have you on today, uh, I got to tell my best turn story. Everyone has a turn. You have a turn story. I have a turn story. We all have turn stories. So I, I was paddle boarding in the bay. And uh, I was, it was a glorious day, flat water. This is about five or six years ago. And I was, I was way out, way out. And I see this little island. I'm like, oh, I want to see what's on the little island, Chris. I want to see what's on the little island. And then I see these birds just like flying near the little island, like no big deal, but a lot of them. I soon learned I got close enough that it was a nesting ground for turns. And they started dive bombing me as I'm in the middle of the effing water. And and where I came from was at least, I would say at least two miles. I was stuck in the water fighting off turns with my, at that point, I was using my paddle like this just to keep them away from me. I was scared out of my mind. I was trying to get to this dumb island and it was a nesting ground for turns. And I I got attacked, I, I mean, at least 20 at a time, at least. So I'm doing this and also trying to turn my paddle board around. So I could get out of the, you know, the the dive bombing zone. <laughs> well, look, turns are good too, because what happens when you got a bunch of turns out in front of your beach diving into the water? I don't know. What does that mean? 
that means there's bluefish or bass or something busting out the surface. So, All you know, right. those birds, those birds are helpful in that situation. You know, you see a, you see a group of birds diving in the ocean right behind you. You better start casting. All right. Let me, uh, let me, uh, uh, another scenario. So let's say, uh, uh, one of the turns, it actually now pokes my actual eyeball. Can I go back with my shotgun? No. Oh. So they get, so they get, they get the upper ground. They, they get, they, they get the advantage. They got, they got immunity. All right. So <laughs> you were listening to my uh, live stream when I was talking about the, ooh, ooh, that smell. Can't you yep. smell that smell? So for the people that weren't with us a few days ago, by the way, all of these uh, live streams are now in my podcast feed, OP radio. So you can listen in the car. So you finally have something to listen to in the car. Um, but I was talking about uh, we were having a, a, a glorious beach day. This is the short version. Next thing you know, this horrendous smell took over the entire beach. And, you know, when you live out here, you're used to smelling like a dead bird, a, a fish on the, you know, that uh, that got washed up and is rotting. You know, so you're used to basic smells here and there. This smell was so bad. Everyone started stopping what they're doing and looking at each other like, what the hell is that smell? It was it was horrendous. It, it was one of those smells where I couldn't, I literally couldn't handle it. I couldn't handle it. I was like, this is so violating this smell. And then my daughter yells, Hey, uh, daddy, what's that? And the waves were as big as this and very choppy and a lot of whitewash. But what I saw in the, uh, the ocean where the, the smell was definitely coming from, and this thing was starting to come to shore, but at the last minute that uh, it, it went back out to sea, um, I saw like this blobby, kind of uh i want to say like beige sand colorish whitish blob and people are like oh that's a jellyfish I'm like that's no jellyfish it was too it was just too blobby and uh we never got a, a an official look at it but that's where the smell was coming from and you texted me about an hour ago and you might have some intel on that on this and you and, and you might have uh the answer to what was going on yeah so when i was listening to it i, I right away from your description i knew exactly what it was uh, it was a sea turtle, a dead sea turtle. Uh, in all my years of working with marine life, I've had, I've spent un an unfortunate amount of time around some dead stuff, uh, seals, whales, dolphins, and sea turtles. And I have to say, by far the stinkiest of them all when they're dead is got to be a sea turtle. There is nothing worse than a dead sea turtle. I mean, I've gone out on calls where somebody would report a dead one. And I'm, you know, five, six hundred yards down the beach and I could smell it right away. And I'm like, yep, there's a turtle dead somewhere. Oh. It's a very distinct, pungent, horrible smell. And uh, when you describe in the color, I'm like, well, that kind of even sounds like a loggerhead sea turtle because they're usually that brownish, sandyish color. And right. if it's upside down, it's going to probably be like a lighter color. And then, yeah, later this afternoon, I got word that they had picked up a, a dead sea turtle uh, on the beaches. So... Um, that's probably your smell, it, you know, with the wind, it just, you know, pushed it around and didn't wash back up, but it was, uh, definitely, uh, I, I'm going to, I would put money on it. It was just, a, it was a dead sea turtle. Wow. And, and they smell that bad. Cause I was thinking it might've been a chunk of a whale and I was thinking it might be a, a dead seal, but I wasn't thinking a uh, sea turtle. Well, I mean, don't get me wrong. Dead whales and seals, they stink too, especially in the summer sun. But, uh, Something with a sea turtle in their shell, that gases really kind of build up in there, and they 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 stink. There's something with that reptile uh, physiology that just they really are, are horrible smelling. And this time of year, we start seeing a lot of sea turtles in the area. Uh, in fact, I was with the rescue center uh, last week. We released a couple before work. Uh, we were doing some research, and um, they're here. But this time of year, they often get hit by boats. Right. So, um, you know, I, I think they've already picked up several loggerheads this summer uh, locally that were hit by boats. So, um, yeah, it's it's a it's an unfortunate thing. But that's that's most likely just, again, what you probably were smelling. Yeah. The odds are it has to be the same thing. I mean, I, I'm not going to lie to you. We were all. Oh, oh geez. Did oh. you get attacked? Did you get attacked by a turn? <laughs> uh, yeah. That, that turn took out my camera. Um, wow. That was weird. <laughs> It's really windy out here. Um, yeah, that, that's why I'm in my garden and not my boat. It's been so windy lately. Yeah, the waves are absolutely uh, just ridiculous. So, um, yeah, man, the smell was just—it was just—it was just terrible. And I was talking about you. Now, you—you—you you, you might correct me, but I assume this video I saw was 
a drone shot of yours where it was sharks feeding on a, a dead uh, whale. Was that you or somebody else online? Uh, I put, I mean, I, there's others online, but I posted a couple last year, uh, last summer of that. Right. And it was just a whale that was dead a couple miles out. And next thing you know, the sharks came a feeding, huh? Yeah. And I mean, I could, again, that whale stunk. I could smell it from a mile, literally a mile away. Um, right. I, I had to make sure I stayed upwind of it cause it just, it was, it was putrid, but still nothing compared to a sea turtle. No. Oh, really? Yeah. I would think the whale would be just as bad as the, uh, the sea turtle, man. Uh, it did just long, larger uh -oh. turtle really, really packs yeah. a punch. All right. Fair enough. And so I, there's nothing I can do with the turns. I just got to let them be a bother, a pest. Appreciate them for when they help you fishing. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm just trying I'm gonna to get, get you. To, I'm going to get you to appreciate birds one of these days. We'll, I we'll, hate we'll, we'll birds. You, you heard what happened with the seagulls, right? And my father-in-law. Yep. <laughs> so, I, I even moved under. I, I, I got coverage because this time of day, the seagulls use the houses like a highway to go all the way that way because it's like some desolate beach and stuff. So they hang out there for the night. And uh, as they go by, they drop loads, and uh, it took out my <laughs> it took out my father lost plate of food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, again, man, first world problems, right? <laughs> I, I understand the first. I understand. I do understand that. You know, I do understand that. But, you know, I mean, it could be worse. It could be in New York City. Could be pigeon Saturday. crap. Uh, not pigeons, just the heat and the crazy people. The crazy yeah, I mean, people. People people crapping on you. <laughs> people crapping on you. Well, you get one or two of those every summer where a guy will just unload in a garbage pail in front of everybody. Uh, and it's usually like Fifth Avenue, which is a really hoity-toity area. <laughs> they, I think they do it on purpose. <laughs> they will drop trow and jump on a garbage can in the middle of the day. Right around, Honestly, right around this time, rush hour. Sweet. That sounds just awesome. <laughs> it is awesome. When are we going to have a beer, bro? Well, I'm, I'm speaking tonight at Uber Geek. I, I got to talk tonight at the brewery in Riverhead. It, uh, st festivity starts at 7, lecture starts at 8, so I'll be drinking beers in a little bit. How awkward is it that uh, you invited me and I just, just forgot about it until this very moment? I, I got to get with the wife, see if we can make it there. Yeah, oh, man, people are asking. Uh, I'm on a different time, so I got... Some new faces checking out the live stream. Chuck Puck, who is this guy and what does he do? It's my friend Chris, a.k.a. Uh, Fish Guy Photos on all the social media, marine biologist. Knew my brother first, and now he knows me. And, uh, you know, now me and my brother fight for his attention. We, we've done a couple podcasts in the past where we uh, we went shark fishing. We tagged some sharks. Yeah. We went we went hawking with my red tail hawk. So I'm a yep. falconer for those that don't know. Um, we did, some, we ate some squirrel that I cooked up. We've, yeah. uh, we've, I know we've just drank some beers and hung out. So yeah, we've done, well, how, uh, about the, how about the time you tried to give me COVID and it didn't work? You forgot that <laughs> one, Chris. You forgot that one. I forgot about that one. Yeah, that was... <laughs> you know, it's always, it was always fun during that time to get the call the next day. Oh, by the way. The day yeah, after you, you hang out with somebody. Oh, by the way, we were we were checking out seals, which was pretty awesome, actually. There was how many were there? Like a hundred? There was at least a hundred. But you called but, me out on it on the on the podcast. You're like, are you because I kept having a cough. You're like, Do you have COVID? I'm like, nah, it's just my allergies. I'm like, Whoa. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then the next day you had to tell me. I'm like, oh, that's just great. Yeah. So no, it's been fun. Yeah. So uh, yeah, so I got, I'm going to be at the brewery tonight. I don't know if you guys could make it, but that'll be fun for anyone else that's in the Riverhead area or at least the east end of the island. Uh, it's only 5.30. You got time to make it, but it's called Uber Geek Brewing in Riverhead. Okay. Um, there's a food truck tonight. It's a pizza truck. Uh, so, again, festivities start around 7. I start my, my talk about 8. It's going to be called Wild Long Island. And guess what? There'll be some birds in there. So, Wild uh, Long Island. What? All right, because there's a bunch of people around literally the world watching this, so they're not going to be able to make it there. Give me a yeah. couple of give me a couple of things you're going to talk about today. So it, what it, so Wild Long Island is just you know often when people think of Long Island and you probably have heard this before too, you know they all think it's the city you know and then they think well there's no wildlife on Long Island because it's just a city but 
you know, for those that follow my social media, Fish Guy Photos, um, you'll see there's all sorts of cool stuff. So I kind of just, it's just kind of a highlight lecture, just some of the really cool stuff I, I've seen. You know, I'll start out with talking about bald eagles. Uh, I'll talk about hummingbirds, owls, and I'll start talking about fox, skunk, deer. And then I usually finish it up with some aquatic stuff, sharks, whales, dolphins, um, different types of, you know, my underwater photography and videos. So again, it's all my photos and videos and just kind of telling the story behind what some of the stuff is. Um, That's awesome. And a yeah. lot of that stuff is on your, your uh, social media. You post great stuff every day. The hummingbird, does it get tired? Oh, I'm sure they get tired. I'm actually, What's that's where I'm, that's where I'm sitting now. This is my, my hummingbird, uh, garden. Oh, uh, are, are there any hummingbirds? Well, not while I'm sitting here talking, they were out here before, um, but they come and go. And, uh, this is when I'm not on my boat. I sit here and, uh, drink a beer or two and, uh, get some content for, uh, for the socials. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're flapping. It looks exhausting. The yeah. No, they, there, you know. That little tiny bird flies to uh, the uh, Central and South America for the winter. Right on. Let me uh, let me throw Matt on for a second. Matt, how are you, buddy? Matt at Adamoski. Who are you, Matt? Dude, you and I talk all the time, man. I'm trying. Who are you? Out in Portland, Oregon. Oh, you're the Portland, Oregon guy. What's up, dude? You, fucking, you do a fucking podcast in the afternoon when I can actually see you, man. Right on. Do you know my friend Chris, aka Fish Guy Photos? Uh, no. He, he's nice to meet you. He's a good dude. This guy's from Portland, has great stories. What have you been up to, Matt? Just working away, man, but uh, had the afternoon off today. Me and the wife are going to go play a little golf this afternoon because we're finally over this stupid heat wave we've had out here. Well, so, yeah. I, well, I want to complain about that to Chris, too. You know, it, it, it's, like, it's like 79 degrees lately out here. Dude, I would take 79 <laughs> degrees in a heartbeat, man. We were 104 degrees yesterday out here. 104 in Portland, Oregon, man. Seattle, yeah. 100. Now, I don't think that I don't think it's climate change, though, right? I doubt it's climate change. <laughs> Shit's a hoax. Now that now that flamingos are hanging out in Maine, I doubt it's climate change, right, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You My know when you when you see a flamingo in no how how the flamingos are showing up where they're 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 moving. Well, north. There was one flamingo that made its way out to Fire Island, then Shinnecock Bay, then it was out in Bridgehampton, then it went up to Cape Cod, then it came back to Long Island again. So it's it's probably just one that got blown off course, which does happen to them from time to time. I think the last time they saw a flamingo in New York State was the 1930s. A, a flamingo gets blown off course by a thousand miles? Yeah, it happens. Did it survive? Yeah, did it survive? I, I haven't heard it recently, but it was doing just fine. It was just bouncing around different places. Oh, that's great. Yeah, love, love a flamingo in our area. That's normal. Yeah, just bounced off course. And it's <laughs> stupid flamingo mind that at any point did it think, maybe I should turn around. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, one, uh, one of the hurricanes, I think it was last summer, because um, they're not native to like you know, parts of Florida, and they got blown into Florida. There was a whole flock of them in Florida just after one of the hurricanes. Right. Love it. Love it. Well, now, I planted a palm tree in our front yard like four years ago. Like, right. In the Pacific Northwest, man. Yeah. That, yeah. I don't think that's normal either. I don't know. But uh, but as soon as you mention climate change or global warming, people lose their effing mind. So I, I'm with everybody. It's just normal, normal stuff happening. We're not we don't have an effect on, on, on this planet at all. There you go. <laughs> I'm, more, I'm more concerned with my turns. Stupid fucking turns. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Matt, how's well, Portland, Oregon doing, man? We're getting around. We're coming back to life. You know, it's been a rough few years. You know, obviously 2020 was kind of a rough year with a rough summer, and uh, there was a lot of protesting. And, uh, and uh, you know, we're starting to crack down a little bit more of the homelessness and uh, the graffiti that's in town. And, uh I've been doing a project downtown, actually building the radio station. Believe it or not, a terrestrial oh. radio station for a classical radio station. They're spending six million dollars on this thing. It's insane, dude. They're they're, they're mentally ill. <laughs> <laughs> they're mentally ill. There's three podcast studios and two main studios and a performance hall with a big video wall and a and and a ray speaker system. Yeah. 
and they've got a broadcast booth in there for not only video, but the they have an audio booth and a video booth that they're like they're spending a shitload of money on this thing for classical music. Uh, not even classic rock, classical. Classical music, Beethoven, Mozart shit. I like that stuff though. I don't mind a little uh, classical. Yes. What about you, Chris? I don't mind it. What's your What's your uh, uh, music of choice, Chris? I don't think I know. You look I'm like a, a, Nick, a, you're a Nickelback guy, aren't you? <laughs> hey, <laughs> you know I'm not. I don't. I don't. I don't hate on Nickelback. Um, you know they're not on my 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 favorites list here. That's for sure. But uh, I mean I, I I you know everything from classic to new rock. Oh, you, probably, you probably like uh, Sticks, the Grand Illusion. No, not that kind. Nah, no, nah, not a not a huge Sticks fan. Um, uh, what you say? Matt? What you say, Matt? Here's a plug for you. We uh, last month down in Vegas because uh, I work in the commercial audiovisual industry. I do you know broadcast and stuff for like uh, radio stations, TV stations, things of that nature. So we had our trade show uh, down in Vegas last month. And I went to the Sphere, and I saw Dead and & Company, and it was the best show I've ever seen, man. It was insane good. That my, thing is just off the chain crazy. My buddy Robert, a.k.a. Littlefoot, he, he, he walked me through the whole experience. He said it's – you can't even – you almost can't even describe it to people. I, it's like looking outside. I mean, they did this reveal, like at the beginning of the show, and they had Hate Ashbury – Right, taken off out of Hate Ashbury, and then they turn the cameras facing over San Francisco, and slowly they bring you into outer space, and you're just standing there, and you're like holding the back of your chair, like God, dude, I'm gonna fall. Oh my God, <laughs> it's that realistic, man. It was wild. It was one of the greatest shows I've ever seen in my life. Matt, and I I need to ask you, what song were they playing during that? Uh, trucking. I was trucking, really, a long version of trucking. And yeah, but they've done that's the they have the same video, but they change like they do three nights. They do Thursday, Friday, Saturday every weekend, and each show is totally different. Right, the feel that they kind of do, and the Hate Ashbury launching, they do that at every show, so right. everybody gets to see that. You got to think they're building another sphere. They're trying to figure it out for the Northeast, right? They have to be because the, the, I mean the amount of money something like that can make. I know it's a it's a big expense to get it going, obviously. But I'm telling you, man, if Tool plays there, oh. I'm mortgaging the house. I hear you. <laughs> Is it a possibility they would do that? I it's that place was made for Tool. It was it's totally made for Tool. It's. I, it's you know, Dave Matthews would be good at Pearl Jam would just totally blow your mind. You got to think Pearl Jam's working on a, a deal with them. I yeah. saw I saw Tool once in New York. I was blown away. Holy crap! Yeah, we just saw Pearl Jam back in May. They came through Portland. Uh, good show. They did really. Yeah. Well. yeah. Hey, I I got to start wrapping up. But Matt, I I got to ask you, how close are you to uh, Roll Off Farms? That's all I know about Portland. We're pretty close, about a half hour, 45 minute drive. Do you ever see the roll offs? Yeah. You do? Yeah. Do you yeah. know who the roll offs are, Chris? Yeah, that's a little No big. idea. They're this big. Yeah. The, little the whole big. family's like this big. The Little People Big World. Big yeah. show on the TLC. I just drove by their place today. I was heading out to St. Helens, but there's a strip bar on the way out there, and I see the dad in there occasionally when we <laughs> stop and get a beer on the way home, man. <laughs> Wait, the dad goes to the strip joint? Oh, yeah, dude. He crawls right up on a stool. He just kind of <laughs> moseys on it in and just kind of uh, right on the stool. There's little legs dangling off. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That is awesome. I can't wait to tell my wife. We love that show. To know that Matt goes to a strip club. What's the name of the strip club? Uh, I forget the name of it, but it's on Highway 30 just outside uh, Scapoose, and that's where they live. They live yeah. in and I All right. And then, the, and then the other thing is the uh, the Sasquatch, the Bigfoot. Are you a believer? My dad says he's seen it. Come on. Come Great. on. If they're so intelligent, why uh, why are they hiding behind trees? I don't know. I don't know. And they survive off berries, and they're that big. Do you believe in it? Fuck no. Get out of here. <laughs> Chris, so, you don't believe in the Bigfoot, do you? Not at all. Not a yeah. chance. 
Do we have any of those type of um, uh, creatures on Long Island? Uh, what, what, what would you call them? Uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Like, like, uh, like, uh, like a Bigfoot. Do we have our own version of a Bigfoot on Long Island, or like some kind of like the uh, New Jersey has the devil? The New not not devil. that I know of. No, we would. We were when we were kids. We were always told to stay out of this certain area of woods because of the diaper man. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> That was I've never that was that was the closest thing I've ever heard to like that kind of thing. But yeah. What was up with the diaper man? <laughs> ah, just one of those urban myth myth things, you know, like I think it was probably something our parents told us to keep us out of the woods was you don't want to go in those woods because that's where the diaper man lives. He's crazy, he wears diapers and you know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> you know, we had a similar one when I was growing up, and I think it's basically adults. They don't want to deal with us in the woods with the yellow jackets and the ticks and everything else that's in the woods. So they they scare the shit out of you, not thinking that eventually we got to go home at night and lay in our beds by ourselves with our own thoughts. And now we're scared shitless of, like in your case, the diaper man. <laughs> you know, I thought I thought when you said my parents said to stay out of, uh, you know, whatever, I thought you were going to say Bayshore. Bayshore. <laughs> little local humor for everybody, Matt. Yes, yeah. Bay you have Shore. to be from Long Island, you know? Well, is it George <laughs> Long Island? Doesn't he count as a Sasquatch or something? Who, Howie? Who, who? George Santos? Isn't he oh, Sa Santos is awesome. I didn't, like, <laughs> I didn't like him and his stupid lies, but after they kicked him out, he's been pretty awesome, man. <laughs> he's been pretty awesome just, just trashing everybody. He's taking everyone down with him. I love it. <laughs> I dig fairy. Yeah, well, what are you gonna do? You know, <laughs> <laughs> I'd have a drink with him. Hell yeah, man. Yeah. All right, I gotta get Chris. Uh, Chris got a gig tonight. Yep. Hey guys. Yeah, check out. So yeah, so if anyone's around the area, it's seven o'clock. Oh, seven o'clock at Uber Geek in Riverhead. All right. Uh, I'll let. Right. Uh, and it's Fish Guy Photos on all the socials. My friend Chris. Thanks, exactly. Chris. See you guys. Hey, man. Have a good one. Bye. Right. Wait, wait, Matt. Le Matt left too. I was gonna give him the proper goodbye. All right. Oh, there he is. Hey. All right, Matt, I got to let you go, too. Anything else before we uh, wrap up? Uh, get to Vegas and see the sphere before the Dead & Company ends that show. Um, I would like to, yeah. I'm, I think out Central Oregon, man. You'll fall in love with it. I, everyone talks about how great Oregon is, man. And then, and then, you know, but then Portland became a fucking nightmare for a few it's, years there. It's a small little piece of Oregon. See, thank you for saying that. I knew the river of Oregon. I, you know, I mean, the uh, immigration problem in New York City, it's its its getting a little hairy, not going <laughs> to lie to you. But, you know, people think they're uh, they are camping out all over Central Park. and they're, it, it's You see it here and there. Although the snatch and grab crimes are way up in New York. I'm going to talk to my friend Dan, who's all day NYC on, uh, on all the social media. Uh, these guys are on, like, mopeds and fucking electric uh, scooters and bikes, and they're just... They're flying by you and grabbing whatever they can out of your hands. That's nuts. Yeah. That's nuts. No, man, get over here and check out Central Oregon, man. You'd love it. All right, Matt. Matt, man, I like talking to you, but you, you just don't get up early, huh? I don't get up at 3 in the morning, man. Yeah, I understand. All right, I'll have to do a few more in the afternoon so I could uh, run into you. Ping me, man. I'll be there. All right. Thanks, Matt. Cheers, buddy. All right. And you're part of the private Facebook group, right? Yes, I am. All right, yeah, all right, there you go. That's why uh, Matt's on camera today. I put the link in the private Facebook group. You go to Opie Radio Fans on Facebook, and then you have, I don't know where you go from that point to get to the private Facebook group. You can figure it out on your own. Bye, Matt. Cheers, big guy. All right, love that guy. He's fun, man. He's got stories. All right, I got to, what do I got to do? I got to walk the dog. I got to put a little salmon on the grill. Going to make a little uh, salad. Not a summer salad. I don't, I don't. I don't, uh, I don't believe in summer salads with the squash and all that, all the summer vegetables. No, I'm gonna make some kind of Greek salad. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna blacken a salmon on my grill. Oh, you don't care? Oh, all right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We'll talk. Soon.